Whether you have a diagnosis or not, I don't care. I'll teach you how to find what's causing your health concerns using the labs you already have. Your doctor might tell you your blood work is normal, but I'm here to teach you a better way. If you're a doctor or a health coach and anything in between, there's one for you too. Download your cheat guides and register here at drkylieburton.com. This podcast is sponsored by Systemic Formulas and Nutribiome. Systemic Formulas, the supplement company I trust with my patients and family. Instead of ordering from a handful of companies, I use 95% SF products. They're top of the line quality with the best lab west of the Mississippi. They're pure, potent, and they get results. In fact, I recommend you follow their Instagram at Systemic Formulas Institute. Also, the man who's behind the Systemic Formulas products, Dr. Shane Morris, is launching a new line of supplements designed to take your microbiome to the next level. He has specific prebiotics designed to feed the probiotics. Learn more and order soon at mybiome.com. All right, let's jump into the episode. Welcome to the Beyond the Diagnosis podcast with me, Dr. Kylie. I have a good friend of mine. Um, we met networking on podcasts. We've been on each other's podcasts a few times. She is back by popular demand on my podcast, Miss, Miss Dr. Tabitha Barber. She goes by Dr. Tabitha. You can find her on her website at drtabitha.com. And your Instagram channel is? The Gutsy Gynecologist. The Gutsy Gynecologist. We're going to talk thyroid today and mistakes people make when they try try to treat their thyroid because Dr. Tabitha is an OBGYN. She's been trained Western medicine, took the leap into the functional medicine world, and now lives her dream and gets to drink coffee while she works with people from her home with her boys in the swimming pool outside. (laughs) (laughs) All right, Dr. Tabitha, thyroid. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Thank you for having me. This is such an important topic. I mean, there are so many women, especially out there that are being misdiagnosed, mistreated and misled with their thyroid issues in the conventional space. So we need to, we really need to delve into this. What have, what have you done previously before the functional medicine world that you're now in And how is that fail? Why is that failing so many people? Yeah. So the standard of care, this is how conventional doctors are trained is to evaluate your thyroid. You order a TSH, a thyroid stimulating hormone, but here's the thing. It's not even a thyroid hormone. It comes from your pituitary gland in your brain. It's talking to your thyroid gland. Your thyroid produces hormones, they mainly produce T4, which is in mostly inactive form of thyroid hormone that has to be converted to active T3 to send the signals to the receptors on your cells. You can also make something called reverse treat T3, which acts like a bully to T3 and reverse T3 also talks to your pituitary gland and changes your TSH level. So when doctors order TSH levels, all they're hearing is how your brain is responding to your thyroid hormones that are being produced. It doesn't tell you what your body's doing with your thyroid hormones, or if you're producing the appropriate levels of each of those different types of thyroid hormones. So that's the biggest mistake that doctors and conventional medicine make is they don't look at a complete picture. It's like trying to figure out the entire picture when you only have one piece of the puzzle, you're not going to see the picture. It's not going to be any clearer to you. And so I really love for women, especially to understand that you need to look at all of the pieces. And then we have to ask, why is your thyroid even not functioning to begin with? So here, you know, I believe with all my heart that our bodies were created to maintain homeostasis and to just function. They stop functioning when things are impeding them and angering them. So 
our thyroid is no exception. If we have toxins being, you know, bombarding the thyroid, if we have an infection that's ticking off our immune system, if we have chemicals that we're exposed to like fluoride and chlorine and different halides that can affect the thyroid. So all of these things are causing the thyroid to struggle and not be able to make their thyroid hormone. And hence you have hypothyroidism. Hypothyroidism doesn't just happen for no reason. And that's the other biggest mistake that conventional medicine does is they just give you this diagnosis. Like it just happens magically. Your thyroid just stops working and poof, now you need Synthroid. And that's the answer to all your prayers. When in reality, you need to figure out why your thyroid is struggling. You need to remove those triggers and heal that so that your thyroid can function. Yeah. I always give the example of think about, think about the thyroid as something swimming. And if you're just trying to keep the head above the water when there are so many factors underneath the water trying to pull it under and sink it. And if you're only focusing on your head above the water and you're missing all the underlying pieces, that's why treatments fail. And yes. you're going to take Synthroid for 20 years and not feel any different, but because someone told you to take it, you're taking it. Yeah. I love that analogy. I think it makes total sense because what we're doing is we're just looking at this surface level marker and What's even worse is say you do get put on Synthroid for your low thyroid function, then the doctor might actually check TSH and free T4. Literally all they're doing is checking that you took your medication, it went into your body and your brain responded to that medication. That is all you know from those labs. And they're almost always quote unquote in the normal range because the range is very big and they're not actually evaluating how your body's handling that medication. Is it activating it from T4 to T3? Is it binding to the receptors? Is it being converted into reverse T3? And so that is why the majority of people on Synthroid for hypothyroidism never feel better. In fact, they usually feel worse over time because they're really, the root causes are compounding. Mm -hmm. So problem number one is that one, we don't look at the complete picture. We're only getting TSH. Well, what are the markers you recommend to determine what that complete picture is? The lab markers. So what should a woman ask their doctor to order for them? So I love to get TSH, total T4, free T4, total T3, free T3, reverse T3, TPO antibodies, thyroid peroxidase antibodies, and thyroglobulin antibodies, TG antibodies. If you have a hyperthyroid picture or a history of Graves disease, then you're going to want to add some other antibodies in there, TSI or thyroid tropin receptor antibodies. Um, but in addition to that, I love to look at your zinc, your selenium, your iodine, your vitamin A, your vitamin D, and your iron. These are all affecting your thyroid production, conversion, and availability at the cell receptor level. So even if you know, you're able to make your T4 okay, that doesn't mean you convert it well. That doesn't mean the cell hears the signal properly. So there are so many factors. And time and time again, I'll see an RBC zinc level be super low on somebody. And that is like the main reason that they aren't utilizing their thyroid hormone. So we're working on all the other stuff to that's attacking the thyroid, but you still got to take medication in the meantime, while you're doing all that work and, and have that medication work. Otherwise you can't function, right? You got to feel good. So something as simple as making sure you're getting enough zinc or vitamin A, that type of thing is often an issue. The other vitamin A, I see quite often be low when vitamin D is low. They're both fat soluble vitamins. And I just, I see that correlation an awful, an awful lot with people who live in the Northern hemisphere. They don't see the sun and then they're, you know, not eating a lot of bright green, bright orange vegetables and things with 
vitamin A in it. Like I personally have a vitamin A SNP. I have a genetic mutation that prevents me from activating it into the form that I can use in my body. So I could eat carrots all day and it's, I'm not going to convert it and utilize it appropriately. So that's part of my thyroid struggle. And I mean, I could go on all day. There's so many things. <laughs> mm -hmm. Vitamin D is the same way. Cause I've, I've seen thousands of labs from people all over the country. And they're like, well, I live in Florida and I'm outside in the sun all day long. Why is my vitamin D at 34? Mm -hmm. Genetics. Yeah. Genetics, for sure. I have two vitamin D snips and we wear sunscreen all the time now. We're, we're, <laughs> we're trained to put all these chemicals on our body and to protect us from the sun. So you're not even getting that ability to produce and convert vitamin D. Yeah. And I always say, and I don't know if this is true or not, but the sun rays, the sun's rays has to go through a bunch of crap to even get to our bodies. So you might be standing out there in the sun, but everything in the air is preventing the true UV rays to get there. Then when it, when it gets to your body, we struggle with even knowing what to do with it. Now our bodies are under so much stress and duress from everything from the yeah. environment, the external envir environment, from the internal environment that telling us and convincing ourselves that we get vitamin D from the sun is almost a lie. Right. And the other factor that we saw, especially in the nineties, when we had the low fat, no fat diet was you need fat to make vitamin D. It's actually made from cholesterol. And so if you are not eating enough healthy fats, you're probably not going to be able to make vitamin D if you're in the sun all day long. So there's so many factors that we just really don't talk about in conventional medicine. And we really do patients such a disservice. Well, even in the functional medicine world, we like to, we like to throw out thyroid supplements and supporting the thyroid in reality. And then we call it root cause. <laughs> really? Yeah. To me, it's helping while you're working on the root cause. Like you want to be able to function and feel well so you can make good food choices and move your body and detox and do all of that stuff. But if you really aren't getting to the root of the issues, like I mentioned, your thyroid will never be able to function. You know, that's where, why reverse T3 is so important because reverse T3 gets elevated from viruses and heavy metals and toxins. And like I mentioned, halides, things like that. If you aren't addressing those issues, th that will just continue on and on. What are halides? So if you look at the periodic table of element in chemistry, there's one row that goes straight down and they have all the same physical chemical properties as each other. They're called a group of halides and iodine is in that group. So thyroid hormone T4 has four iodines. T3 has three iodines and fluoride and chlorine are both halides. And those are very commonly found in our water supply and in our foods. And those can interfere with the production of thyroid hormone because they're, they're bumping iodine out of the way and they're competing for that spot. And so they really can muck it up. Oh, the other one is bromine. Bromine is added to a lot of our processed foods, especially like cereal. So I remember back in the day before I got Hashimoto's, I lived on cereal. I ate so much of that garbage, you know, <laughs> and I went swimming for hours every day in my chlorine pool. And I did fluoride swishes at school because fluoride was popular and it was put in our well water. And like my poor thyroid never stood a chance. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and then you say it like that. And it's like, oh, it, there's a reason why my thyroid quit working. It's yeah. not just like you said, poof, all of a sudden it's done. Yeah. It's just an accumulation effect of the environment we live in, the internal environment inside our bodies. And then all of a sudden our hair is falling out. We can't lose weight. Our brain fog is extreme and you wonder why you're so tired all the time 
Yeah. I mean, I, I went through the whole gamut, you know, I had that scenario go on for years and I lived on garbage, but then I got pregnant as a 17 year old talk about stress. So we know that pregnancy causes thyroid dysfunction, any kind of hormonal shift the woman goes through synthetic hormones, like birth control pills will do it or hormonal IUDs. Um, and then So you got the hormonal shifts, you got the environmental toxins, you got the bad diet and it all, you know, culminates. And I developed actually hyperthyroidism initially, and they gave me radioactive iodine treatment and wiped my thyroid out because it was over-functioning. And so I then was under-functioning and needed Synthroid. So you know, I wish I understood back then, but I was a child. Everything was so reactionary. It was like, oh, your thyroid's over-functioning. Let's burn it and kill it off chemically by giving you all of this radioactive iodine, <laughs> you know? And unfortunately, we still do this with patients. Instead of stepping back and saying, why is her thyroid overreacting? If, if they would have asked that, they would have realized that, Yes, I was going through a thyroid storm and it's very common for when your thyroid to be attacked, all of the stored thyroid hormone you have in there to just be dumped out into your system. And so of course you have hyperthyroid symptoms because all of your stored hormone is now in your bloodstream and it will calm down and get better if you stop that attack. But we don't treat the thyroid appropriately. We don't do that. Instead, we just kill off the offending agent instead of supporting it. Right. So we remove the thing because. Right. So I went through all these years of needing Synthroid, which didn't even help because of something the doctors did to me. That's called iatrogenic cause. So it's an induced cause from the doctor, the medical system. So Everything they do is very reactionary and oftentimes harmful and causing new problems. What's the difference in your patient reaction from an OBGYN to now functional medicine hormone specialist? So previously when it was, you know, check the TSH, increase or decrease the Synthroid, None of the symptoms ever went away. Women still felt tired. They were still overweight. They still had dry, thinning hair. They were depressed. They had constipation and sluggish bowels. You know, they would come in every four to six months and they would have the same complaints. And it it always felt very disappointing and frustrating to me and obviously to them as well. But you think that's just, you, you have thyroid issues. This is how it is. And you, that's, you know, you get dismissed now that I know like, oh my gosh, we need to work on these root causes and actually calm the thyroid attack and support it and heal it. Like women's symptoms resolve and they actually change and they feel better. And they go back to feeling like amazing. Their bowels work regularly, their hair grows back. They can finally lose that stubborn weight. Their brain is functioning again. They can think at work. I mean, the list is endless of how dramatically different it it really is. You, You know, you said think at work and it blows my mind at what would our workforce look like? from a productive productivity standpoint, from a motherhood standpoint, everything, if we were getting the help that we needed. Yeah. Wouldn't that be amazing? It would be amazing. The problem is insurance companies and big pharma would no longer have patients. So that's why that will never happen, you know, but here we are fighting the fight, one person, one patient at a time. That's all we can do is just keep building awareness for people to know you are meant to live an amazing, healthy, vibrant life. It's not normal to feel miserable and tired and depressed and be overweight. Those are not, that's not how God created us. I just don't believe that whatsoever. Yeah. And so there's another problem. 
When you expect insurance to pay for your medical treatment, don't expect to get better. Yeah. Those drugs are not made to keep you better. Mm -hmm. yeah. I always get asked that. Well, do you take insurance? Insurance doesn't take me because <laughs> I get you out of the system. Amen. And it's up to you, listeners and practitioners, whether you, what kind of results do you want to get for people? And if you're thinking, well, I don't have the money, what is the price of your health really costing you? Mm -hmm. You know, I joined TikTok five weeks ago, six weeks ago, and it's blowing up <laughs> hundred thousand views, every video. And every time I, I get a comment that says, oh, I would love to work with someone like you, but I don't have the money. You do. If your health means that much to you. Yes. We will find it. You find money for an iPhone. You find money for whatever is important to you. If your health is important to you, you will find it. And it doesn't even need to be like one-on-one -on -one intensive care treatment. Some women need that stuff, but a lot of people just need some extra tools, which is why we are here providing these tools on this podcast. Exactly. I couldn't agree more. And once you start paying for your health, you also pay attention. If people invest and put that money on the table, they're going to do the work. They're going to learn the tools and implement. I know for my, my own self, like if you pay $10 a month for some gym down the street, you never go. And that $10 doesn't really bother you, right? But if you're slapping down 300, you're getting a personal trainer or something like that you're probably going to show up and do the workouts, right? Because you want to get your money out of it. It's the same mental process. So I, I found that women are just in it to win it when they actually pay and their results improve exponentially because you have to take control of your health. I cannot make you well, like the best doctor in the world. Yeah, cannot there's no magic you. pill for yeah. any of this. It is work. On, yeah. on a variety of levels, it is work. Yeah, and nobody can heal you. You are the only one who can heal yourself. Love it. Okay, we've talked some problems. Now, if there was one step that people can make to improve their thyroid health right now, what would it be? Oh my goodness. Do I have to pick just one? <laughs> pick one or two or three evaluate what you're putting in and on your body. So how the outside world is affecting you, whether that be the food that you're putting in your body, the personal care products you're slathering all over yourself, the, you know, the air you're breathing, whatever's coming in from the outside world is affecting your thyroid, I promise you. And the biggest culprits are usually processed foods that have horribly toxic chemicals in them, very inflammatory fats, um, and pesticides, plastics, BPAs, all of that stuff. So if you can really clean up your diet and your environment, your thyroid's going to calm down quite a bit, you know, and if it doesn't, then we got to start looking deeper things. Do you have chronic viral infection, mold and mycotoxins, heavy metal toxicity, but you can make headway in so many of those areas just by actually paying attention to what you are eating and putting on your body. Putting on is big too. Lotions, makeup, and then you mentioned the air we breathe. I love talking about the air we breathe and the water we drink. Yeah. Because the oh, food this, gets hyped on, but it's only one piece. Yeah. Right now, this time of year, everybody's got their scented candles out and all of that. Those are toxic chemicals that go in your body and, you know, bind to your hormone receptors and send warped signals and they cause, they cause all kinds of havoc. And so 
stop with the bed, bath and beyond or the fragrance places or whatever those are called, you know, and if you're going to light candles, just light beeswax with essential oils mixed in or something that is clean. You got to get away from all of these chemicals that you're breathing in. Mm -hmm. In fact, I did a previous podcast episode and we talked about the word fragrance. Yes. That word, if any, that word on any product, avoid it. Because mm -hmm. that means they don't need to tell you what's inside that product. Yeah. And that it's a man-made toxic chemical that will not leave your system very easily. And it will wreak havoc on your hormones. So yeah. one of the easiest things you can do, pay attention to what goes in and on your body. And two, anything that has the word fragrance on it in your house, out the door. Yes. Amen. Cool. All right. Lots of problems that are not being addressed. We've talked about the labs and what labs you should be running. And in fact, I can write, I wrote those down. So let's just rehash them real quick. TSH, total T4 and free T4, total T3 and free T3, reverse T3, TPO and TG antibodies. Those are just basic thyroid panels. And if you're like, well, my doctor won't run them, get a new doctor or order them online. There are lots of places that will ship kits to you, your house now. And then in addition, get some nutrition markers like zinc, selenium, iodine, vitamin A, vitamin D, and iron. Yes. That's a list, but yeah. you've been listening to me. You are in charge of your health. Push for those labs to get ran. Be demanding if you need to be. Or just work with me or Dr. Tabitha. <laughs> exactly. I would say iron is such a, an important one for women. I get so many women with heavy periods. And we I was just going to say the heavy periods. Every month, you lose so much of your iron stores. I commonly see women with a ferritin of 10 or below. You know, our ferritin should be at 100. And these women are trying to survive. Iron is one of the necessary ingredients to make ATP, you know, the energy that our mitochondria make to keep us alive. And so we're asking women to function who don't even have the ingredients to make the energy that they need. It's crazy. So yeah. check a ferritin. Yeah. And if your doctor, I've heard this before, if your doctor says, well, your CBC is fine, there's no need to run an iron panel, run the iron panel, just do it. Yeah. Exactly. Just Sometimes the CBC is wrong. Yeah. I will tell women all the time, like your hemoglobin will be normal because your body will sacrifice come hell or high water and try to keep everything stable for the moment being, but you don't have anything saved in the bank. Like if you have a heavy period or you get cut and have some trauma, you're done for like, there's nothing in the bank to pull from. There's no stores left. I see that with vitamin D. I see it with B12 a lot, like their B12s hanging out at 300 and they wonder why they can't make any energy. You got nothing in the bank. There's nothing like you are running on fumes. So you're not going crazy. It's not because you're a mom. Your body is depleted. Yes. Oh, so much good stuff. Where can we find you, Dr. Tabitha? Oh my gosh. Come follow me on Instagram at the Gutsy Gynecologist, on Facebook at Dr. Tabitha. Check out my website, drtabitha.com. It's three A's, no I's, T-A-B-A-T-H-A. And I am licensed in over half the country. So if you do need an actual physician to order labs, write prescriptions, I do all of that. Um, but I would love to help anybody. This girl's an overachiever. In fact, I pulled this up on my phone. No matter what your history is, you can run with your future because Dr. Tabitha was once a high school dropout, <laughs> suffered from depression, team mom. Now she's a successful doctor. She's fit and healthy and she's a woman empowering a woman empowering other women. Yes. She's your success story right here. So don't let your past define you. Whatever that is, you have a bright future ahead if you choose to make it that way. Exactly. What a good conversation. 
Whether you have a diagnosis or not, I don't care. I'll teach you how to find what's causing your health concerns using the labs you already have. Your doctor might tell you your blood work is normal, but I'm here to teach you a better way. If you're a doctor or a health coach and anything in between, there's one for you too. Download your cheat guides and register here at drkylieburton.com. This podcast is sponsored by Systemic Formulas and Nutribiome. Systemic Formulas, the supplement company I trust with my patients and family. Instead of ordering from a handful of companies, I use 95% SF products. They're top of the line quality with the best lab west of the Mississippi. They're pure, potent, and they get results. In fact, I recommend you follow their Instagram at Systemic Formulas Institute. Also, the man who's behind the Systemic Formulas products, Dr. Shane Morris, is launching a new line of supplements designed to take your microbiome to the next level. He has specific prebiotics designed to feed the probiotics. Learn more and order soon at mybiome.com, M-Y-B-Y-O-M-E.com.